بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي يجيب من دعاه ويجير من استجاره ويذل من أعرض عن ذكره واتبع هواه أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعرفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير Honorable President of the Convention, Reverend Judges and experts from their respective fields. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On this special occasion of fifth international allocution competition, I want to shed some light on the topic of equality and justice in Islam. Dear dignitaries and brothers in Islam, we all are well aware of the fact that Islam is the perfect form of a true religion and a complete code of life. It guards mankind in all spheres of life, be it political, social, economical or religious. The first and foremost teaching of Islam about equality is that all mankind were created from a single pair of parents. Yet, they spread on different climes and develop different languages and different shades of complexion. But, they are equal on the basis of humanity and brotherhood. As it is mentioned in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 213, Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 133, Al-Hujrat, chapter 49, verse 13, and so on. I would be humble enough to recite one verse with its translation, as the glorious Quran says. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير The ayah means O oh mankind we have created you from a single pair of male and female and made you into races and tribes so that you may identify one another. Surely, the noblest of you in Allah's sight is the one who is the most pious of you. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing, all-aware. This ayah explains some important points, such as, point number one, the principle of the brother who laid down here is based on the broadest foundation and the differences are only for the sake of identification. Point number two, the cause of nobility. Point number three, in Islam, racial pride and ego of the so-called Hercules were uprooted. Dear listeners, prophetic traditions are full of the teachings of equality and justice. For reference, see Bukhari hadith number 5575, Musnad Ahmad hadith number 6447, Muslim Sharif hadith number 4721. In this context, I would like to narrate what holy hadith as the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him says Ya ayyuhan nas ala inna rabbakum wahid wa inna abakum wahid la fudla li arabiyin ala ajamiyin wa la li ajamiyin ala arabiyin wa la li aswada ala ahmara wa la li ahmara ala aswada illa bi taqwa O people behold your Lord is one your father is one there is no superiority for an Arab or a non-Arab. Neither for a black or a red. Nor for a red or a black. Except in piety. Al-Bahaqi hadith number 4921. Intellectuals, Islam demands Muslims to maintain justice and transparency with everyone. As the Surah An-Nisa chapter 4 verse 135 clearly describes the fact saying be upholders of justice. Even though against the interest of yourself or the parents and the kinsmen. The sense of this ayah, clearly asks us to be upholders of justice, even though it is against the interest of yourself or the parents and the kinsmen. As the second caliph, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, has given practical shape to it, as we know that in Islam, alcohol is totally unlawful and forbidden. Whosoever is caught drunk 
is punished with 80 lashes. A very interesting story is reported by Musannaf Ali Abdul Razak, hadith number 17047. The story goes like this. Once, the son of the second caliph, Hadrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, namely Abu Shama, committed the same sin and was caught drunk. So, the caliph passed the order to punish his son with 80 lashes. In fact, he died at 75th lash and the remaining five lashes were hit on his grave. Such a great level of justice it was. These days, if the children of leaders and ministers commit anything or indulge in any wrongdoings, they use all their influences to save their children from being sentenced and punished. Likewise, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, O oh people, beware of injustice, for injustice shall be darkness on the day of judgment. It's narrated by Musnad Ahmad, hadith number 22978. And those who have not gotten their rights in this life will deceive them on the day of judgment. As the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, refers to, on the day of judgment, rights will be given to those to whom they are due, and wrongs will be redressed. It's narrated by Musnad Ahmad, hadith number 2447. Esteemed oil man, if we cast our minds back, we will come to know that in spite of the lofty ideals and enlightenment, the West did not solve racial problems and inequality and injustice. While Islam has achieved success due to its universal teachings and divine sanction. In short, the Islamic concept of equality and justice saved the humanity from the disaster and paved the way for democracy, absolute justice and freedom. Now, I wind up my talk here with this Urdu couplet. Adalo insaf fakat hashre pe mawkuf nahi. Adalo insaf fakat hashre pe mawkuf nahi. Zindagi khud bhi gunahon ki saza deti hai. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahu Allahu Allah Allahu 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 Allah Allah